trying to be present throughout the whole breath, each breath, all the way in, all the way out. We like to think that if we had it all figured out, we wouldn't have to pay so much attention. That if there was some formula we could just find, that we could memorize, that would take care of it, so we wouldn't have to put so much effort into the meditation, put so much effort into being present. Just plug into the formula and things would go on automatic pilot. But that's missing the point. The point is being attentive, paying careful attention, being sensitive. It's a quality that the Buddha calls citta, intentness, attention, really giving yourself fully to what you're doing right now. So that the insights come not as a formula that allows you to be inattentive, but as a sensitivity of what's going on right now, so you can read what's happening. In other words, you're trying to strengthen this quality of being attentive, this quality of being present. Because when you're really present, then you don't need all the other formula. You recognize the signs of what's going on when the breath is too long, when the breath is too short, when the breath energy in the body is too sluggish, when it's too, when it's too active. It's by being attentive that you notice these things. that you're sensitive to them, so that you can read them for what they're telling you. So the insights you gain are not necessarily sentences that you could write down in little books of wisdom. But it's just a greater and greater sensitivity to what's going on. So don't think that you'd like to have things explained beforehand. Or trying to sit here and come up with little rules. Well, when this happens, that's this, and when that happens, that's this is something else, and you should do this, should do that. You're trying to develop the quality of being able to listen, able to read what's happening in the present moment. If you're looking for the little formula or the little nuggets of wisdom that you can take home, so that you can drop the effort that goes into being so attentive. It's like the old story of the goose laying the golden egg. You get a golden egg and then you kill the goose. That's the end of the eggs. The goose here being the ability to stay attentive, to be present to be fully engaged in what's happening with the breath. And the insights will come on their own. Keep producing, producing, producing the insights. Not for the sake of taking home with you, but for the sake of using them right here, right now. You don't have to be afraid that you're not going to remember them for the next time. If you're really attentive, your sensitivity develops and becomes an ability to read things more and more carefully. Like sailing a boat. When you first get out on the boat, and they give you the rudder. It doesn't take long before you flip the boat over, because you steer too hard to the right, steer too hard to the right, left. You don't have a sense of what's just right. But if you pay attention to what you're doing, after all, that sense develops. And the next time you get into the boat, it's not that you have to remember any lessons that you learned from the last time. It, it's there, sort of in you, the sensitivity, the ability to read how much pressure you should put on the rudder at this point, when this happens, when that happens. It's a greater and greater familiarity that comes from being fully attentive. So the same principle applies here. It's 
not the case that you're going to be fully attentive for five minutes and learn whatever lessons you're going to need for the hour, and then just zone out or go on automatic pilot. You have to be as attentive to the first breath as you are to the last breath, as attentive to the last breath as you are to the first one, and all the breaths in between. And as this quality of attentiveness grows stronger, your sensitivity grows stronger. There's less and less of a conscious effort, but it doesn't mean that you're less present. Just that you're more skilled at being present, more skilled at being sensitive, ready to learn whatever lessons there are to learn. They say that Michelangelo, at the age of 87, made the comment that he was still learning how to sculpt. Well, that should be your attitude as you meditate. There's always things to learn. Even arahants have things to learn. They've learned enough already to overcome their defilements, but they're still learning other things. Because they're attentive all the time. They're watching what's going on. Their sensitivity has been heightened. When they talk about the path being identical with the goal, there is an element of truth in it, in the sense that you, you don't follow the path and then just stop when you reach the goal and throw away all the things that you had to do when you're on the path. They say that even arahants practice the four foundations of mindfulness, not because they have anything more to do in, in terms of uprooting their defilements, but because it's a pleasant abiding. It's a good place to be. Sometimes, if they have to teach other people, they use the sensitivities that they developed in their meditation and apply it to the process of teaching. So don't hear, sit here saying, well, I'll just stay with the breath until I get the results I want, and then I can stop this effort. You're working with a quality that's going to take you there, and the quality that's going to stay with you once you are there. The qualities of mindfulness, alertness. The sermon, all the good qualities we're working on here. You want to bring them more and more to bear on what you're doing all the time. They get stronger and stronger. give you the sensitivity you need to cut through defilements when you see them. They give you the sensitivity you need to find more stable states of concentration, to figure out the techniques you need in order to get the mind to settle down when it's obstreperous. But again, once you've learned those lessons, it's not the case that you have to turn off or you can turn off the the effort to be sensitive, the effort to be fully engaged. It's just you learn how to be more and more comfortable being that engaged. So that whatever lessons come up, whatever things there are that you have to read within yourself, whatever things you have to listen to within yourself, you're ready to listen. You're alert to the signs that you have to decipher when you read. So do what you can to keep this goose alive and well, so it can lay the golden eggs you need. You crack open the golden egg, there's a lesson for you to use right there, right then. You don't have to worry about making a stockpile of golden eggs, because it's a funny kind of gold. You turn around a few minutes later and it's turned to feathers. But the fact is that the, if you're really attentive, the goose is ready to lay another golden egg. So you keep it producing. Use the eggs for what, they, what their intended purpose is and then just let them go. And 
and do your best to keep this mind state going so that it's ready to lay another one. Give you more gold all the time.